in to Ryan Wells, who comes up the middle to about the 25. Now let's join our colleague on the field, Todd Harris. Thank you, Keith. Well, yesterday the rumors began, and this morning hope turned into reality. Stanford's All-American Troy Walters will not only play, he's going to start. What they're going to do? Two layers of orthoplast, a layer of foam, and a heavy tape job. Initially, a hand surgeon looked at it said, no way. That wasn't good enough for Troy Walters. They talked to some NFL team doctors. They said, brace it, and the kid can play. And we know Troy Walters. And I got to tell you, in warm-ups, he didn't drop a ball. Keith? All right, here we go to the air, right out of the box. It is Dermani Fitz getting up to the 30-yard line for a pickup of about five yards. Jamar Fletcher brought him down. The at and T starting lineup for the Stanford Cardinal. Up front, anchored by number 73, Mike McLaughlin. Soren Ian all making his 46th consecutive start. This group allowed only 15 sacks. Wide receivers, the uh, Troy Walter story you know about by now. And uh, the other people up there, uh, Durrani Pitts, Russell Stewart, and later in the day, Dave Davis, they're good. Todd Husak, of course, is the man pulling the trigger and very important in the whole scheme of things. They'll go over the running play. And it's going to work for a first down, or very close to it, as Brian Allen, a 190-pounder out of Ontario, California, carried it. Jason Doring made the tackle. Wisconsin defense along the front, number 77, Wendell Bryant, very good sophomore. Big game here last year. The officials are going to measure, apparently, as they've stopped the clock. The linebacking core for Wisconsin, number 16, Chris Godorzi, leads the team in tackles. Number 19, Roger Knight, is a tough blitzer in the defensive secondary. Number two, cornerback Jamar Fletcher has led the Big Ten in interceptions in successive seasons, seven each year, and five of them for touchdowns. And while they are measuring, let me give you the officials. Dennis Hennigan is the referee. Bruce Palmer, the umpire. John McGrath, head linesman. Paul Tide, line judge. Bill Hagen, side judge. Tom Thompson the field judge Gary Danzowitz the back judge and Jack Kramer's the alternate and they are from the Big East Conference and Keith Mike McLaughlin did get the his 46th start of his career for Stanford but that's about it he limped to the sideline and Zach Quasha now has taken over at center Joe Fairchild moves into that left guard position and the ball is on the 35 yard line first down for the Stanford Cardinal wearing the white uniform Usak back, passes away in a hurry. Ball is off the hands of Troy Walter. The ball was thrown in such a place that that sore right hand had to be the one underneath to make the catch, and he didn't get it. It's going to be a great battle all afternoon long here. Number two, Jamar Fletcher for Wisconsin and Troy Walters. It's his right hand, remember. Fletcher gets away with a little grab there, and that kept Walters from getting the ball. But remember, it's his right hand, and that ball went off his fingertips, did not have the strength to pull it in. And it's second down and ten. This is Brian Allen losing his balance on uh, some contact from Jason Doring. And Doring is big old safety. He's going to be in their face all afternoon. Count on it as a pickup on the yard of a, of a couple of yards on the play. And for our Dell Graphic Solutions, our game solutions for Wisconsin obviously play physical football. Barry Alvarez says that his team's bigger, they're tougher, they're stronger, and they will wear out Stanford. Jay Bose has come into the backfield on a nickel situation as it's obvious passing down for Stanford on third down and eight. And Todd Husak has changed the play at the line of scrimmage. Drops back and throws the ball is batted up in the air. The ball was intended for Dave Davis, but it was John Favre, the, the rush end, who reached up and slapped it away. And so now it brings up fourth down, and here comes what has been this season a weak part of the Stanford football team. Their kicking game has not been all that good. On the other hand, Wisconsin offers you Nick Davis, who is deep as the punt returner, and he's one of the best in the conference, and those numbers right there show you why. The flag is down. The kick is pretty good. The ball is downfield. That'll get a penalty flag because they didn't clear him for the uh, required two yards. Randy Fasani came down and hit him. Didn't give him the the clearance to catch the football so you got a flag back up here at the 35 yard line the line of scrimmage you got a flag down where the contact was made on the attempted reception of the punt and the big thing about that graphic we saw our FedEx team comparison it's all about field position 
and Nick Davis provides field position with his ability to return punts. He has a 71-yard touchdown return this year against Murray State, and he is a big difference maker for Wisconsin. As referees Illegal sort this one out. On the kicking team, the flag for fair catch interference will be disregarded as the player was pushed into the receiving player. So the Cardinal get a bit of a break on that because Fasani, when he came down and made the contact, was blocked into the receiver. And as a result, that flag is picked up and the ball will stay down pretty deep where Wisconsin will start its first possession. So Barry Alvarez grumbling a bit on the call and uh, we've got timeout in the early going of the road and Nick Davis is waiting. The punt is away. Not as good as the first one. Sean Tolpenrud, who's had a tough year punting the ball, didn't get all of that one. So Wisconsin, in reality, comes out with a better starting field position. Now, the AT&T starting lineup for the Wisconsin Badgers. Along the front, number 75, uh, Chris McIntosh, who's a mountain of a man at 6'7 and 3'10. He's where they go for the hard stuff. The wide receiver core, understated here. Number 88, Chris Chambers, very good. Backfield, quarterback Brooke Bollinger's uh, development this year has been a great asset for uh, Ron Dade. He took some of the pressure off Dane, but it's not a big guess as to who gets the ball on the first carry, is it? as Big Ron takes it and hammers it right up the pipe and runs into, guess who? Willie Howard, who's in there playing with an ACL knee. The defense for the Stanford Cardinal is the one that's really under the gun. The people in the front have a chore of considerable dimension. Willie Howard is at defensive end with that sore knee. The linebackers have got to be good today because you can't let Ron Dane get into the secondary. There's nobody back there except the strong safety Tim Smith big enough to take him on. Here's Bollinger on a rollout. The Cardinal defense in full pursuit. Willie Howard and Sharka Steen and they take him down behind the line of scrimmage. That's really going to be the key key for stopping the rollout and the bootlegs for Wisconsin. Stanford's going to run their linebackers at the quarterback. But having number 77 in the game is the real plus. You can see the brace on his right knee, but you can also see his ability to get into the face of the blocker and make a play on the quarterback. And he's over there against that great big old 280-pound tight end, uh, Retzlaff. That's why they wanted him in there, and it's now third down and uh, 13. Ball is in the air and long and complete. Intended for Nick Davis who, in addition to returning punts for Wisconsin, is also a very good flinker. Defended by Tank Williams, who's making his first start in a long time for Stanford in the secondary. And after getting five yards uh, with Ron Dane on first down, Stanford's defense comes up with a big play on second down, and then Bollinger, not where he's most comfortable in the pocket, overthrows a wide open Nick Davis. Kevin Stepke is in the punt. He's a good one. He's got a bit of a sore back much of the season. The kick is away. It's a high kick, and it's going to Durrani Pitts on a fair catch call at the 25-yard line. So there the Cardinal will take over, and you go punt, punt. In the first two possessions of the ball game, that punt was 39 yards. There is no scope. The weather's getting better as the hours go by on this New Year's Day 2000. First down for the Cardinal from their own 25-yard line. Husak turns and hands the ball off to Corey Wire, who's in at the tailback position, and Wire will pick up maybe three yards on the carry. Todd Harris. Thank you, Keith. Unfortunate news for Stanford. You know, we interviewed Mike McLaughlin earlier this week. He had a streak going where he hadn't missed a start well. Apparently, he'd done more damage to that knee earlier in the week. It's a torn ACL. They let him have the start so he could keep his streak alive and go out a senior on top. But he is done for the day. The real concern now is the long snapper, John Sandy. They are really going to need him. And Coach Tyrone Willingham is very concerned. Back to you. Second down and seven for the Cardinal. Ball is handed off to Coyle Wire again. Goes around the left side. He's a tough guy. And he's going to pick up about three yards on that carry with Bobby Myers coming up from the safety position to make the play. 
But what we saw there, though, is a counterplay, and, and Bill Dietrich, offensive coordinator for Stanford, said that because Wisconsin is very, very disciplined, that allows us to predict what type of uh, defense they're going to be in. So we feel that counterplays are going to be effective and misdirection. We can look for some reverses, especially to Troy Walters. You've got four wideouts on the field now for Stanford on third down and long three. Usak goes to the sideline. Pass is complete to Troy Walters. First down. Cardinal. He caught the ball in front of Jamar Fletcher. Fletcher backed off and gave him a little cushion as Usak came off the snap. And Walters broke the play and stopped just beyond the marker. And did you see the smile on Troy Walters' face? A smile of relief that he caught the ball. And it's a good catch, too. And he has to use both his hands tucks the ball away into his left hand and tries to protect the right hand even had to give a high five with his left hand number 11 Joe Porchard comes into the ball game now at quarterback and he basically is a single back on the first down snap with four or five wideouts on the field for this play and Joe the baseball player punts it takes off up the middle with it and he's caught from behind Wendell Bryant got a hold of him as he went by if Bryant doesn't get him he's got maybe 10 12 15 yards he had a 56 yard run against UCLA this year might have gone farther but in his own admission said he ran out of gas Joe's got a decision to make as whether or not he comes back to play football next year because the anticipation is the baseball folks are going to be bringing a wallet and ringing a cash register in front of him. Second down and eight now. And Husak is back in there. And second. It's Bryant. Wendell Bryant had a huge game here a year ago against the UCLA Bruins. And he's starting off like gangbusters again. The loss is going to be back to the 33-yard line. Here he is right here, number 77, his seventh sack of the year. He just beats Joe Fairchild. So you're seeing the effect of Mike McLaughlin out of the game. Fairchild moves into left guard position. Quasha, the normal left guard, is now the center. And it is third down and 14. Back down as the ball is thrown to the left side. And uh, Kerry Carter showing up in the backfield for the first time. But let's see about the penalty. Yeah, they killed the play, so this is probably false start against Stanford. That play wasn't going to get the Five first down Stanford. anyway. False start, offense, five-yard penalty, remains third down. I'll bet you it's uh, fair to The FedEx Orange Bowl is coming up right after the Rose Bowl game is completed here today, and we're just getting started. That will uh, be a good football game. It's Michigan and Alabama. Two great running backs in that ball game, and two teams that love to run the football. So you might want to make sure your China doors close tightly for that one, because they'll be doing some paint swapping in the Orange Bowl, Alabama and Michigan. Third down now. Usak with time, and now is hit as he throws, and for the first time. Uh, the penetration came from the inside as Wendell Bryant is finding some daylight in the Stanford offensive blocking. Boy, they really are. He's from the right side of the screen here. Fairchild turns out on him, but watch Husek trying to find a spot in the pocket, but Bryant just too much for the left side of the Stanford offensive line. Anthony Gabriel is in to do the snapping, so Sandy, this long snapper, that ball is snapped high, but Topenrud gets it out. It's a good punt. Spinning and carrying to the 34-yard line where Nick Davis makes the fair catch. So Gabriel snapped it high, but Topenrud saved it. Every play starts with the center, and when you lose a guy like McLaughlin, I mean, you have lost a lot. 46 consecutive starts. Every start start in his entire career and there's big Mike he, he's, he's big he occupies a lot of space so now Wisconsin will go from their 34 yard line first down no score in the ball game first quarter time remaining 813 Bollinger turns and gives it to uh, Ron Dane and Dane's got about three yards 
And Keith Ardell game solutions for Stanford on defense. Very, very simple. Kent Baird, defensive coordinator, says control Ron Dane. You notice the word stop Ron Dane is not out, not in there. Obviously, when a guy averages six yards per carry and does most of his damage on first and second down, you don't stop number 33. He's the single back. He's got the ball. They slow him down behind the line of scrimmage. And they get him. That was good penetration. Austin Lee, number 94, made the tackle, but Willie Howard was in there to mess up the play behind the line of scrimmage. Another miracle worker, number 77, second guy in here. You see he's jumping right now to the outside. He beats Dag Retzlaff. And that's going to be a battle all day long, but that's why Willie Howard has been moved to defensive end because of his quickness to get in front of Red Slap and force Dane to cut it back where the linebackers are waiting. So it is third down and eight. Wallinger back. Get behind the line of scrimmage, but gets away from that. But he's going to be knocked down just about where the ball was snapped. Sharkus Steen again in on the action. And this time it was Frank Primus firing in to force him. Kent Bear's going to bring some pressure here. Here is Frank Primus, and he's coming on the corner blitz here. Now, what should happen is Bollinger should throw the release right here. He doesn't get it done, and now there's just no way he can pick up that yardage for the first down. The snap bounces back to the punter, but it's a beauty from Stipke running Durante Pitts all the way back to the 11-yard line where he makes the fair catch, and there the Cardinal will have it. First down, Stanford. They're on 11 with no score. 6.09 to go, first quarter. Every year I say, I'm going to quit smoking. Day later, I'm at it again. Till this year. See this? My last piece of Nicorette gum. Been smoke free with Nicorette now for 12 weeks. With Nicorette, I help control my cravings two ways. I used it on a regular schedule to help curb them. And then for unexpected cravings, I took another piece. And now, no more craving, no more nicotine. Happy New Year. For a better quit date, you'll have to wait another thousand years. You can do it. Nicorette can help. With the AT&T One Rate 7 Cent Plan, calls are just 7 cents a minute all day, every day. What about Canada? What? Canada. Yeah, same thing. With the international plan, it's 7 cents a minute always. What about all the other countries in the world? Japan, Mexico, Liechtenstein. Liechtenstein. All right. Every country has its own low rate. What about France? France. France. Same low rate as France. Great. I'm going to go call France. Which is right near France. 7 cents to Canada and great rates around the world. Call 1-800-4-1-RATE to enroll. There will be a next one, one who changes the game by control, by speed, by power. The NHL on ABC. Call now and you can own a copy of the official Rose Bowl game program from today's game. It's the same one sold at the game, and it makes a terrific souvenir. The Sugar, Fiesta, and Orange Bowl programs are also available. Call 1-800-769-8843 now. You want to join ABC Sports in Atlanta for the Super Bowl? Watch Monday Night Football for all the details this Monday night. But remember, you got to watch to win. Got to change defensively for Stanford. Marcus Hoover, number 92, goes into the ball game, replacing Willie Howard. Let's see what the Badgers do with that change. Now they got a penalty flag first off. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Worth noting, I think, here that it's been 48 days since Wisconsin played a game. They finished their season November 13. And keep a long layoff like that will affect an offense more than a defense. So far for Wisconsin, they've had two possessions, both of them three plays and out. And it's first down and 15. Chad Coons, fullback. And now 
we're ready. Oh, first and 15. Bollinger sets under. Watch it now. Watch it now. Gives to Dane. A little move left, a little move right, then back into the middle. And Tyron Willingham talking about getting ready for this ball game. What to think about. The message to the team, and this is what he said. Respect and don't fear. Okay, respect them. Good football team. Done some great things. Uh, but at the same time, don't fear them. Uh, we've done some good things. And if we play our game, we become difficult to deal with. They've been difficult so far. Well, the offense hasn't done much. The defense has stepped up pretty well. Second down. Call it 12. Bollinger, a little roll, a little play action. Now steps away with the suit. White shirts are everywhere. And he'll get it back to the 35-yard line. And it's going to be third down and 11. Sharka Steen and Andrew Curry. Very much involved in that play for the Cardinal. And again, Sharka Steen recognized the bootleg. Here he is right in the middle. As soon as Bollinger comes out this way, watch Steen come up and force him. Bollinger shows that he's a pretty good runner here. He gets away from Hoover, but there's no way to go to the outside. That forces him back where all the Cardinal are waiting for him. Now they've got trips at the bottom of the screen. Three wide outs. At the bottom of the picture, Chris Chambers is the man moving number 88. Bollinger getting a little heat. Now pulls it in and takes off. He's past the line of scrimmage, and he's taken down in Wisconsin. We'll have to punt. Mark Starkbauer ran him down and made the tackle. You know, uh, Brooks Bollinger is only a redshirt freshman. He's had a great run of seven games. He's 7-0 and as a starter. But Stanford is trying to confuse him late at the line of scrimmage, shifting their front, shifting their linebackers, forcing them into obvious passing situations. And the secondary of Stanford's doing a good job. So tough start now for the freshman Bollinger. Step, get a punt. Gets it out. Ooh, that's a beauty. Naradi Pitt circles under it and lets it go. Oh, mistake. Actually didn't make that much difference because Pitt was standing on the five-yard line and Joey Bose kept the ball from going into the end zone and killed it at the Stanford two. So Wisconsin's winning the kicking game so far. In our AT&T flashback, we look back to the 1963 Rose Bowl game. That was a matchup between Ron Vanderkellen, at quarterback for Wisconsin, and Pete Bethard of Southern California. Do you remember it? In the game, number 88, Pat Richter, caught a record 11 passes. Pat is now the athletic director at the University of Wisconsin. And that was a football game that took about four and a half hours to play. It was one of the longest ever. First down from the two-yard line. The Trojans won the game, incidentally, 42-37. Out of the end zone now, Stanford in a bit of a pickle here as the big Wisconsin defensive unit swells up and will try to stuff them and get better field position yet. That was Kerry Carter, the bigger of the running backs, a freshman out of Ontario, Canada, making the carry. So far, Wisconsin has a huge edge as far as uh, average starting position. And uh, with Stanford now starting this drive on the two-yard line, it's imperative that when Wisconsin gets the ball back, they'll have great field position, but they've got to do something with the ball. They've got the weapon if they can get him cranked up. You give them the ball on the 35-yard line all day, you're going to get beat. Ball is up the middle. He's got a man. It's Troy Walters. First down at the 31-yard line. Sack is cool, he's calm, he's a competitor, and with the play action fake, he gets enough time to find Troy Walters. Good protection by Stanford. With the play action, they can keep the back in, Kerry Carter, with a man right in his face. Husack throws a perfect ball to Walters. Right in stride, huge first down. 31 yard line. All the way. That's good for a first down. Complete to Dave Davis, who's a pretty good-sized uh, receiver. Plays bigger than six feet. And it's another first down for the Cardinals. 
That ball was caught in front of Mike Eccles. And what Sanford's trying to do is use a double move against these aggressive corners. Eccles is almost as good as Jamar Fletcher. He doesn't go for the out and up fake because he's in a zone coverage. But Davis does a nice job of recognizing he has nothing down the sidelines. Quarterback and receiver on the same page. Another big play for Stanford. And he moves the football to near the 48-yard line for the Cardinal in the first down. First real movement by either offense so far in the game. Given to Carter. A stand-up run like that's not going to get you much against Wisconsin. It might get you some, some very sore spots. Aerial coverage for today's program brought to you by AT&T, proud presenting sponsor of this 2000 Rose Bowl game. Second down, 10 for Stanford. Time remaining, one minute coming up in the first quarter of play and no score. Ryan Allen and Casey Moore are the backs lined up behind Todd Husak. Husak still got it. Gets his pass away. Caught. Casey Moore out of the backfield. Makes it another Stanford first down in front of Jason Doring. And this is as good a catch as you'll ever see any receiver make. Wide receiver, tight end, halfback. But hey, how about a fullback? After the fake, Moore slips into the secondary. A bullet from Husak. And now watch the layout here by Casey Moore. If that ball is on Moore just a little bit, he may race all the way into the end zone. Great catch. Put the ball at the 34-yard line of the Badgers and first down Stanford. Ryan Allen backfield. Usak rolls out, throws the ball to Dewani Pitts. And Dewani Pitts picks up about 11 yards and gets another first down. He picks up more than that. He got close to 13-14. So put it inside the 20. First down for Stanford at the Wisconsin 17-yard line. Chris Godorzi made the tackle. And this offense of Stanford is uh, doing a great job of controlling the ball, giving their defense a rest on the sidelines and keeping Ron Dane off the field. And we're running down to the final seconds of the first quarter. No score, Stanford threatening. ABC Sports presentation of the Rose Bowl, presented by AT&T, returns after this message and the word from our ABC station. To that ball coming back. This is a real time, and the quarterback, as you said, uh, the holder is the quarterback, Todd Husak, and he might have lost a fingernail or two on that one. <laughs> Handled it well, though, and Vaselli just nailed it. Here's the kickoff by Vaselli, driving it all the way into the end zone. Wow, four yards deep. Nick Davis is coming out. Runs into his own man. That slows him down, and he'll go down at about the 15-yard line. Now time for the Aflac trivia question. Which was the last non-Big Ten or Pac-10 team to play in the Rose Bowl? Do you remember? Very famous college football team. So here comes Wisconsin, who's gone little so far in the offense portion of the game, trailing three to nothing. Starting from the 15-yard line, Dane bounces outside, finds daylight, big run by Ron, and he's up to about the 35-yard line. Frank Primus and Mark Stockbauer. You never give up you never relax with this guy on the field he'll tear you up and very determined look to be a little bit frustrated here breaks the tackle of Tim Smith that's not a good sign for Stanford the straight arm on Primus who just gets one of the shoelaces to bring down Dane after 20 yards that is the initial first down for the Wisconsin Badgers now we're going back to the kind of football game that uh, Barry Alvarez likes to play physical game big offensive line and a big old 255 tailback 55 pound tailback beating on you it goes back to the glory days of the student body right and left and John McKay was just Southern California when he would say first quarter three yards second quarter five third quarter ten fourth quarter touchdown 
And he said the ball only weighs what 13 ounces. They shouldn't get uh, tired carrying something that light. One of the big reasons that offensive front moves, of course, is that big fella, number 75, McIntosh. This is a quarterback draw they were trying to run there, and Stanford didn't buy it. And Bollinger's brought down by Willie Howard. Now here's Todd Harris. Well, Keith, you're talking about big Chris McIntosh. He is quite a performer. Now, after the team lost badly back in 1998's Outback Bowl, they had a team meeting, and he stood up and said, you know what, I didn't come to Wisconsin to go to the Outback Bowl. I came here to go to the Rose Bowl. And here he is two years in a row. There's the co-MVP of this Badger team, along with Ron Day, number 75, Chris McIntosh, a surefire first-round pick in the NFL draft. 39-yard line. Third down, six. Bollinger looks to the left side, gets his man, completes it to Chris Chambers, number 88. Chris Chambers is a junior out of Bedford, Ohio, and he's working on that play against Chris Johnson, number 29, in at corner for Stanford. And Bollinger showing his maturity, throwing to his favorite receiver, and I know I could tell you he's his favorite receiver because he's caught four of his last five touchdown passes have come from Brooks Bollinger so Bollinger's looking for number 88 put the ball at the 48 yard line and the first down That's Dane to the 50 pick up of two well Wisconsin needs to get some air going here uh, Dan because uh, that'll open it up for Ron Dane well, the thing about Wisconsin, they talk about now with the emergence of, of Bollinger as a quarterback, is it, it's opened up uh, not only Dane, but it's helped Chambers as well. And next year, they're going to add Michael Bennett to the mix because he's going to be in the backfield with Dane leaving, and he's out there right now, but he's out there as a wide receiver. Number 29, Michael Bennett, he's a partner out of Milwaukee. Hey! Bollinger back, going deep down the middle, he's got Chambers, and he makes the catch. First down, Wisconsin inside the Stanford 15-yard line. He got away from Reuben Carter. By bringing Bennett around on the reverse fake from the left side of the screen, you'll see it. It affects the middle of the secondary for Stanford. There's nobody in the middle of the field. Bollinger lays it out there, and look at Chambers with a five-yard lead on Carter and just an outstanding effort to bring that ball in. Look at how he protects it from hitting the ground. 35-yard gain, first down at the Stanford 15-yard line for the Badgers, their first threat of the ball game. Give it to Ron Dane, and he'll go down just about the line of scrimmage. What a totally different Badger football team, and it all started with that 20-yard run by Ron Dane. He personally jump-started this offense. Andrew Curry made that last tackle, number 99, for Stanford. Number 41, Chad Coons, comes off the field, the fullback. gives to Dane. Penalty flag on the field. Stockbauer, the first man to get a hold of Dane as he crosses the line of scrimmage. And let's see about the penalty flag. It's against Wisconsin. Brooks Bollinger, after he took over, you know, you, you look at the obvious here with the, the record and the total yards, but it's this one right here. 21-point difference with Brooks Bollinger as the starting quarterback. Penalty is declined. Third down. So they take the down. It brings up third and nine and declining a five-yard penalty on the illegal shift and leaves the football at the 14-yard line. And they've got a very good place kicker in Vitaly Pozetsky, and now timeout is called and called quickly. 9.26 to go in the first half of play. Wisconsin threatening against Stanford's 3-0 lead. Coverage in the air of today's ballgame. Pilot Mark Grebitz 
And the cameraman is Greg Johnson. Now it is third down and nine. Ball is on the 14-yard line. Wisconsin trying to keep it going and grab the lead. Bollinger's pass is thrown in complete, making the play against Nick Davis. Reuben Carter, the man who got burned on the long 35-yard gain by Chris Chambers, but he was there this time. Carter may have got away with a little bit of a hold there, but Davis has got to make that catch. He was falling down, but he still had two hands up on that ball. Bollinger threw it where he had to, and Carter got away with a little bit of a grab. 31-yard field goal try now from Vitaly Pizetsky. He came from the Soviet Union to a football career at Wisconsin. Kick is up, a lot of leg on it, and it's good. And at 9 minutes and 19 seconds to play in the first half, we're even at 3. High, long kick back to the 7-yard line to return to Ryan Wells. And Wells comes up across the 20 near the 24. So there the Cardinal will go to work, a 3-3 ball game, and here's the answer to your AFLAC trivia question. Which non-Big Ten, Pac-10 team, the last time a non-Big Ten, Pac-10 team played here, and it was Alabama. The Alabama Crimson Tide led by Harry Gilmer. And Gilmer, when he couldn't find a place to run, would jump up in the air and whistle a bullet. And that bunch of freshmen, this, remember, was right at the end of the war. In 1946, came out and won decisively over Southern California. Alabama spent a lot of time in Pasadena back in the eighth days. Good play by the Wisconsin defender, Roger Knight. That's the second really big play that Knight has made because Troy Walters was behind him and had some room. And he shows his versatility with this play. We saw him making a play in the backfield, but this is in pass coverage, and this is where Knight is so important for Wisconsin, especially in this game against Stanford. He has the ability to almost give uh, Wisconsin a uh, extra defensive back. Second down and 10. Ball is just short of the 24-yard line. Todd Hussein having a pretty good ball game. Hands it off the inside, goes to Coy Wire, and not much. The middle of that Wisconsin defensive front is pretty sticky. You run into the likes of Janik and Malik and Bryant, Balaji and Sprague. They make you sore. It'll be third down and nine. Stanford's been trying to hit the middle of that uh, Wisconsin defensive line with just single back. If they're going to do that, they're going to have to get a fullback in front of the tailback. We've got Walters and Pitts now as the wideouts. Pressure coming on Husek. The ball is away. Throw to Brian Allen. And there's a very decisive tackle by Jason Doring on Brian Allen. And Stanford will punt. Jason Doring is 202 pounds. He's out of Rhinelander, Wisconsin, and he is a tough guy. And what he did is he took the place of the uh, cornerback. Here is Eccles. He's coming on the blitz, so that means Doring, as a safety, has to come out and pick up the back. Brian Allen, and he did a great job. On his way by Tolpin Rood. Gets it up. Gets it to turnover. Pretty good kick. Fair catch to Nick Davis. Davis uh, handling that high floating kick very well. It'll be put down at the 29-yard line of Fort Augustine, who's a 235-pound linebacker out of Etiwanda, California, makes the tackle. Ron Dane is, is fun to be around. I'm beginning to understand, the more I've seen of him the last couple of weeks, he's a very easy fellow to be around. His teammates really like him. Out of Berlin, New Jersey, a Heisman Trophy winner. Did a great job of handling all that uh, Heisman hype too in the entire year, and especially uh, back in New York was happy to get back to practice. He said. That's up to the 40 and across it, and that's a first down. Charkastein making another tackle. Ron Dane proved to everybody last year in the Rose Bowl that he's just not a power runner. On this 54-yarder against UCLA, he showed he has the. Uh, Speed to run away from the secondary and then the moves to make the secondary miss. 
and get in the end zone. That was a year ago. Right now, Dane is out, and Michael Bennett is into the ball game. The ball is at the 41-yard line, where it's first down, and Bollinger runs away from the pressure, gets it off downfield. He's got a man wide open. Bennett missed the ball. Michael Bennett missed the ball. There's a penalty flag back near where the ball was thrown. Willie Howard, Bill Ferrario were involved. Well, let's see how the call goes. Ah, it's against Wisconsin, clipping. And it's on Ferrario, blocking against Willie Howard. That's kind of scary. Willie's out there with an ACL knee as it is. Well, let's take a look at it. 77 is Howard. Ferrario is going to come from the other side of the formation, number 60, right here. He can't catch up to him. That's a good call. Block in the back, clipping. And uh, Willie Howard's real lucky he didn't re-injure that right knee. Clipping on the offense. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. That's a huge penalty. From the spot of the foul, really moves it way, way back there. The key on that play, Willie Howard still has the speed, even with that bad knee, to get out there and contain the quarterback. Much too fast for Bill Ferrario. 25-yard penalty. <laughs> Ball now sits at the 16-yard line, where it's first down and 35, and Ron Dane is back. And has the ball. And does not get to the line of scrimmage because Tim Smith is the only man in that uh, defensive secondary really big enough to take him on. Smith is 230 pounds at 6'4", and Tim came up to make the tackle. And that's what Stanford wants to do is get the Tim Smith involved in the run defense get him up to the line of scrimmage they're trying to shift both their inside linebackers Mark Stockbauer and Shark Dean to the strong side because Wisconsin with Dane running behind that big offensive line like to give him a lot of the options let him stretch the defense and then cut back Dane is out Daniels is in Carlo Daniels Bollinger rolls it out pressure coming going to be he gets the ball away and throws it into the crowd. Stanford almost had a sack on him back in here the goal line. Austin Lee number 94 led that defensive charge. So that Stanford Cardinal defense about which millions of words have been written playing pretty well right now. And most of those millions of words have been bad yeah. words. <laughs> yes. But you can see Lee uh, similar to what Willie Howard did on the play previous with the containment on the quarterback and then after reading the bootleg, Sharkestine is going and attacking the line of scrimmage and forcing Bollinger to throw the ball away in that case. Ball is at the 15-yard line. It is third down and 36. And Carlo Daniels. Carlos is to the outside. Michael Bennett, 29, not 39. And Stockbauer makes the hit on him, and uh, they'll fight. Shows you just how critical that penalty against Bill Ferrario was. Go you know, from a near touchdown reception by Bennett to a first and 25, and now an impossible situation, a third and 37. Deronnie Pitts is deep for this man. Kevin Stimp is punt. No pressure on Stimp. Liner. Pitts might have a little room. Bobbled it though, and. Uh, Still working at it. And he puts the ball back on the Wisconsin side of the field. Takes it down to about the 46-yard line before Bobby Myers finally tracked him down. So Deronte Pitts, nobody wrapped him. He took the hit, shook it off, and had a nice return out of it of 13 yards. Tonight, right behind us, comes the FedEx Orange Bowl from Lorida. Brad Nestler and Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan will be down there covering that one for you. Sean Alexander, the big running back for Alabama. Mr. Thomas for Michigan. Two teams that love to run the football and play defense. That's at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific, part of the Bowl Championship Series. Kerry Carter is in the backfield. Husak keeps the ball and will run it. 
pick up about eight yards. He was knocked out of bounds by Donnell Thompson, and a penalty flag followed them. Yeah, actually, he stepped out of bounds, and then Thompson came with the hit. And he was only about two yards out of bounds, which is two yards too much. Donnell playing with a bad left ankle, maybe not having the speed to get him before he goes out of bounds. Now he's going to get the big penalty. It'll be a 15-yarder. Little razzle dazzle for Stanford. They fake the reverse to Walters there. And then Husak does what he normally doesn't do. He doesn't run the ball that often. There's the hit out of bounds, and the flag comes flying. Watch Husak. He's looking for that first down marker. Decides to go out of bounds. That's a good call by the official. Dennis Hennigan is the referee. They are out of the Big East Conference. Deronny Pitts and Troy Walters are the wideouts, and Wisconsin knows sooner or later they're going to give that reverse to Walters. Faked it a couple times already in the first yep. half. Sanford threatening again. Usak back down the middle. It goes, and it's caught by Walters at the three-yard line right in front of Jamar Fletcher. My play action pass has been very good for Stanford today, which is kind of surprising because they're not running the ball worth a lick. But it's giving Husak good pass protection. After the fake to Kerry Carter, you're going to see Walters come in from the right side of the screen in front of Jamar Fletcher. It's zone coverage by Wisconsin. Ball thrown low so Walters doesn't have to expose his body or that bad right hand. He can cradle the ball. But did he catch it? Looked like it hit the ground. It's a catch. They're snapping it down there. And Joe Porter's in it quarterback. And he turns and gives the ball to Kerry Carter, the big back, and Carter at 225 gets nothing on that play. That was a pass play of 19 yards that Walters caught. And aren't we glad that we are college football and we don't have to worry about interrupting the flow of the game by having the official go over and look into a camera as they do in that other league. Oh, he caught it. He caught the ball there. He's down. Then the ball comes loose. That's a good call. Borchard comes into the game on the goal line to give Stanford the ability to run the option, the bootleg, and also the quarterback draw. He scored against Notre Dame on a naked bootleg in the last game. The strong-legged fellow, Coy Wire, is in there at the tailback position right now. And Orchard keeps it, throws it into the end zone, and throws it away. Russell Stewart was back in the back of the end zone, but uh, Orchard couldn't see him because there was a man defending against him, and he threw it away. We got a flag in the end zone, too, Keith. Might be... Doring uh, may be holding. holding. This is against Notre Dame. Watch as Borchard comes out here. There's no help, but there is also nobody from Notre Dame. Very easy touchdown for Joe Borchard. Here's the call on the flag in the end zone. Holding on defense. the defense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Holding on the defense. Automatic first down. And that'll put the ball about a yard and a half away from the Wisconsin goal line. And Keith, it was Jason Doring holding Russell Stewart. Watch him right here. He's trying to get to the corner of the end zone, number 84. There's the grab by Doring. Borchard with a heady shot of throwing it out of the back of the end zone, getting the flag. Borchard keeps it, turns inside. Close. No call. Gordorzi there to get him. It's at the one. Second down and go. I think Borchard made up his mind a little bit too early there, but you really can't blame him when the ball is so close to the goal line. But if he's a little bit more patient on that option and pitches the ball back, Stanford has an easy touchdown. Usak threading on the sidelines. Second down and go. Borchard to the fullback, and that won't get it. That's right down at the line of scrimmage. Casey Moore never really had a chance to move the stack. Somebody came low and locked him early. That's one of those misdirection plays that Stanford thought that they could uh, be successful with against Wisconsin. But again, every time they give the ball to the running back, uh, just a single running back with no blocker in front of them, they have gotten absolutely nothing. They got Kerry Carter in there now. He's the bigger of the backs. He's the freshman. And it's third down and goal from the one.
Carter. He made it. Touchdown, Stanford. He bounced off the first hit by Thompson and slid into the end zone. And he had a lead blocker in front of him. And I think that, along with that big size you talked about, Keith, is why he gets into the end zone. Casey Moore is in front of him. Number 33. Watch as they hit off the right side. Good kick out block there. There's the block by Moore. There's the touchdown. Baselli for the point. Snapping troubles. Mike McLaughlin, uh, John Sandy, who is the snapper on uh, circumstances like this, the points and field goals. Anthony Gabriel playing in his relief. And uh, that's the second time Gabriel has had a bad snap. Here's another look at the touchdown as we go to break. 2-0-3 to play in the first half. Stanford Legion, 9-3. And on the first down snap, Bollinger runs away from the pressure, trying to get to the outside. Got one good block, and now he gets to the sidelines. He's going to pick up about five or six yards. Ron Dane was the man that threw the block. That kept him from being dropped well back of the line of scrimmage. I would think that uh, the boys have probably seen a few distractions in New Orleans. <laughs> around the uh, New Year's yeah, uh, yeah, especially nice. this yeah. New Year's mm, yes <laughs> the opportunity is certainly there second down and three <laughs> passes to the sidelines and good to Chris Chambers for a first down a minute and 42 seconds as he goes out of bounds to stop the clock remaining in the first half of play one thing Stanford defensively is doing uh, during this drive they've moved Willie Howard back inside as a tackle and made uh, Real Johnson a defensive end, so they're getting more speed. Johnson had 17 tackles for a loss this year, including 13 sacks. I think it's amazing the way Willie Howard's playing. I cannot believe he's out there with a torn ACL. There he is. Yep. Ah! On first down, Bollinger. Lee's after him. Runs away from him and throws. Hey! It's out of bounds. That pass was out of bounds. Nick Davis was the intended receiver. Nick had his hands on it. Primus was right there with him. But even if he'd caught it, it wouldn't have counted. And you know, it was dangerously close to Coach Barry Alvarez on the sidelines. Yep. Here's Barry right here. That's Remember, scary. he's got a cane there. And uh, he does not have the wow. ability to get out of the way. You can see how wrapped up that right knee is, but there's nothing wrong with his vocal cords. Well, there's some feeling he made the catch, I think. <laughs> That's what Can't yell like that from the press box. <laughs> He's feisty, boy. Second down and ten. Going big, down the middle. It's incomplete intended for Davis. Davis had double coverage that time. Running with him was Primus and Tank Williams. Harry Alvarez played for Bob Devaney at Nebraska and started his coaching career in Nebraska. And to this day, talks so fondly of uh, Bob Devaney, not only as a man and a coach, but of the philosophy. And a lot of Devaney's philosophy is in this Wisconsin program. Wanted to do just like Devaney did, build a program and sustain it. He says we are in the sustained mode now. I should say, three Rose Bowls and a tip. <laughs> Bollinger back, looking deep, going deep, down the sidelines, and Chambers can't track it down. Now you've got a minute and 23 to play in the first half, and it's fourth down. So the Badgers trying to make something happen with a long ball, doesn't work, and they'll punt. Keith, and now this is where Stanford's very dangerous with their passing game and with Troy Walters in the game. They've got all three of their timeouts remaining, and they should get decent field position. Durrani Fitz is waiting for Stemsky's punt. Stemsky can kill it sometimes, so let's see here. Well, Fitz will take a shot at it. 
He went right into a Wisconsin man at the 30, falls forward to the 31. Bose making the tackle. And there, Stanford will go to work. If you were amazed at Willie Howard playing, this is equally as ma amazing. Troy Walters in the first half showing no nil, nil, nil effects of that uh, dislocated right wrist. And this one got him down in uh, field, great field position where they took it in for the touchdown. Dave Davis is in there now, number 81, as a wideout. Eddie Gales, number 21, is on the field. He's another speed burner. And they go out of the shotgun. Usak's pass run quickly to Dave Davis. Davis can do things with the ball after he catches it. But he was pushed out of bounds there by Bose. And a moment with Todd Harris. Well, Keith, Dave Davis may be the master of T-shirts. You know, he's the guy that started up the one T plus one G equals one B. That's one team plus one goal equals one bowl. Well, his latest one on the front of the shirt says, they picked us to finish eighth in the Pac-10. Do you believe that? We didn't. Some of the guys in the Speed Corps are wearing those shirts today. Another entrepreneur from Stanford. Second down and seven. A lot of those guys around, I'll tell you. That's good for a first down and then some. Durrani picks. And Pitts will take him down to about the 41-42 yard line. And a penalty flag was thrown back around the 30 yard line. So let's see about that. All that excitement might be for naught. Holding on the offense. You've got 56 seconds left to play in the first half now. Stanford leading Wisconsin by a score of 9-3. to three. That negated... According to Mark Amento, 24-yard pickup. Kelly Hayes has come down off the mountain to spend a New Year's Day with us. On the offense, 10-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Repeat second down. It was some of the people that went to the Rose Parade this morning, man, said it was cold. Well, as I was driving back from your house last night after a wonderful dinner, uh, there were people camped out here. Here's the hold right here by. Jeff Gronshagen, that allowed uh, Usak to get this ball off and negates a big play. But again, it's that running ability after the catch. Yep. They do it well. Second down and 17 now. Usak turns and hands the ball away. And there's a further loss on the play. Eddie Gales had no chance. Wendell Bryant just ate him up. And even with the timeout, Stanford, uh, after that penalty, they're going to just uh, take this one to the house and go in at halftime, happy to be up with a six-point lead over the heavily favored Badgers. Now Wisconsin says they want timeout. They want to get a shot and get the ball back. Well, they've got Nick Davis, who's one of the best kick return guys in the country. I don't blame him. I would, too. 16 seconds remains to play. And, uh, holding on to his chain. What do you call them? The trench dog. Stanford was here in 1972, 71, 72. They had the Thunder Chickens. Today they got a dancing tree. 21 yard line, third down and 20. 16 ticks remaining on the clock. They'll take this snap. Got to run it out. There's a penalty flag down as uh, Kerry Carter runs into Wendell Bryant. And he gets out to about the 25 yard line. And Wisconsin jumps all over it again to stop the clock. Now they've got 11 seconds. And they'll have to punt it. Willie Bryant saying, or Wendell Bryant rather, saying, I was offside, yep. coach. Taking the blame. Offside at the five yard penalty. By the defense, five yard penalty, repeat third down. That could mean, I don't believe, though, in, in my wildest imagination that. Uh, Stanford to put the ball in the air, but uh, if they could break a run here of some substance, uh, it would effectively kill the clock. And they're not going to have to because the clock continues to run and it's over. The half is over, and Stanford leads Wisconsin by a score of nine to three after the first half of play. Now let's go to John and Terry, New Orleans, for the national cup. <laughs>
will go three yards deep in the end zone. Davis will put it down. First down, Wisconsin at the 20. A look at some of the highlights from the first half. Let's take a look at Ron Dane's one big run. This is a 20-yarder, and this led to a Wisconsin field goal. They're only three points of the first half. Stanford got good field position on a catch by Troy Walters down the one-yard line. Then Kerry Carter powers it in. And this may be the most important play of the first half. A bad snap by Anthony Gabriel, and Stanford does not convert the touchdown. That's why it's 9-3, to three, a touchdown by Wisconsin. They can take the lead, so missed extra points can be a load. Here comes the second half now with Ron Dane. That's a five-yard pickup on his first carry from the 20 to the 25. Take a look at our Nokia game summary. You can see that uh, Todd Husak has been the uh, most of the offense provider for the Cardinal. Troy Walters, each of those three receptions, all for first downs, and you can see that uh, the three points for Wisconsin, the lowest first half point total this season. The offensive front for Wisconsin, McIntosh, Ferrario, Robach, Costa, Tauscher, and Retzlaff, the tight end. Bollinger gives the ball to Thane up the middle. He goes. He's loose. You do not want him in your secondary. They finally track him down and bring him down. Just short of the 10-yard line, Frank Primus ran him down. But it's first down, Wisconsin, at the Stanford 11-yard line. Stanford shifts their defense to the strong side, and Wisconsin at halftime made the adjustment that when Stanford shifts strong, we're going to come back weak side. Here goes Kuhn's back to the weak side. He's going to lead up inside, but this is Ron Dane at his very best, making tacklers miss, finding his blocking, and then almost outrunning the secondary for the touchdown. But as it is, a huge play for Wisconsin. 64 yards and first down. Badgers at the Stanford 11-yard line. Kuhn's the fullback gets a carry. 5-4. He picked up six. Seven yards on that carry. Well, Chad didn't get that many. When you get it tucked in there, boy, he's he's excited. And he's a dangerous pass receiver out of the backfield. 11 catches and two touchdown receptions. But you know what, Keith? He averages six yards per carry yeah, he does. as well as Ron Day. I would have loved to have been in that locker room at halftime to hear Barry Alvarez. They'll have to repaint it tomorrow. <laughs> Second down, three from the four. 25 seconds left, ticking along, and Dane going to the outside of the corner. Touchdown, Badgers. Demetrius Brown threw a huge block to get him on the corner. So Wisconsin comes out steaming with a big guy breaking a 64-yard run and then scores. And Wisconsin football on the ground. There's the block by Cubes on Tim Smith. And high-stepping into the end zone is Ron Dane. Boy, that was easy for Wisconsin. Four plays, and they're in the end zone. Something they couldn't do in the first half. Was that skip for the point? Wisconsin goes to the lead for the first time today, 10 to 9. And we're just started the second half of play. Now Eric Mullick, fighting through the traffic, drops him for a loss. Well, Stamper tried to counter the, that great drive with a trick play on the kickoff return. That didn't get them as much as they thought they would get. And now on their first down play, uh, just feeding right into the Badger defense with that very slow developing misdirection. Davis and Fitz come to the lower side of the picture. They've got four wideouts out there right now. And second down and 15. Cusack's pass to the sidelines is good. And almost getting away is Tafiti Uso, who had just come into the ball game, and he's hurt. He really was tackled and fell down awkwardly. And it looks like it might be a left knee or a left ankle. 
but he came very very close to breaking it all the way and that's the one thing about these Stanford receivers this is Uso but we've seen Walters and Pitts and Davis Usak finds him in the dead zone right there between the safety and the corner and there is the injury as Fletcher just barely hangs on I'll tell you what he outruns Doring if he doesn't get tangled up with Fletcher he probably scores no question well, too bad Sanders had the injury bug. But it's a first down up at the 49-yard line. This pass is thrown beyond the reach of Durrani Pitts to the near sideline. And that was really the uh, first bad pass for Todd Cusack as we look at the Tostitos player comparison for the quarterback. The interesting thing for Brooks Bollinger, all three of these completions to one man, Chris Chambers. You know what Ron Dane does not have? He does not have... Uh, touchdown receiving. He only had one catch all year long. <laughs> 31 in his I mean, four-year career. In his career, he's never scored a touchdown uh, catch in the ball. He probably won't. <laughs> Brian Allen's having a hard time. He just can't get on track. The Stanford ground game has uh, just simply hasn't done anything. Bobby Myers, who was one of those guys who stepped up this year to fill that uh, uh, safety, strong safety spot. He got tangled up with Allen, and he would not turn him loose. That was a bulldog and tackle there, Keith, wasn't it? I mean, all he didn't have, and now another injury for Stanford as Allen limps off the field. The only thing that Bobby Myers didn't have there was a little rope to tie the three legs together. <laughs> Give that cowboy a hand. Third down and 12. Coy Wire is in the backfield. And you've got your... Four wideouts in there, three wideouts in there. And Todd Husak looking at the uh, Wisconsin defense and listening to that other color, big red down there, making all the noise. Calls time to talk. The locker room for the second half, red hot. They got eight people in the box. Husak back, has time, passes away, overthrows Derani Pitts. He had him. Pitts was a good four yards clear of the nearest defender, and Husak missed him in the face of the pressure. Yeah, exactly right, Keith. Watch the pressure right up the middle here. They're trying to get in Husak's face. When you do this to a quarterback, he doesn't step up into his pass. What he does is he throws off balance, and that's the result, a high pass, and that would have been a touchdown for Stanford. Anthony Gabriel's snap this time is all right. Tolkien Roots kick, pretty good. Fair catch called by Davis, and the Wisconsin Badgers will go to work around the 13-yard line. We join Todd Harris. Thank you, Keith. It's amazing how fortunes changed after a 64-yard run by Ron Dane. As Coach Willingham was walking off the field, he said he was very happy with his team's performance. In particular, Coach Kemp Bear's defensive scheme. He said, we won, ha won one half, we've got to win another. Coach Alvarez... Believe me, he laid into his team. He said, no more sloppy play. I said, what's the problem? He said, we have no rhythm whatsoever. But again, Ron Dane can change that rather quickly. Back to you. Already has. 13-yard line, first down. Dane. Number 77, Willie Howard has a hold of him. He picked up two yards. You cannot let 255 pounds of elusive fury get loose in your secondary because he'll just run over him. Every time that Stanford's been able to stop him, they've been able to get penetration, and that's what Willie Howard does so well. 19 times this year, he's uh, made tackles in his enemy in the enemy backfield. You got to do it against Dane. Bollinger to throw it. Sideline pattern is good. And it'll be a first down for Wisconsin. So now they get some daylight behind them. And Stanford's got to realize, Keith, that uh, Bollinger's completed four passes today, and all four have been a, a number 88, Chris Chambers. So why don't you put two men on number 88? I would certainly be tempted. But Davis, Davis is he's dangerous too. You can see what happens, though, when Dane can get a shoulder into you. He can ride you for three, four, five yards. There isn't much you can do about it. 
And it appeared that time that when the uh, handoff between Bollinger and Dane happened, they uh, might have got their feet tangled up just a little bit because Dane was uh, stumbling as he reached the line of scrimmage and still managed to pick up two and a half, three yards. But Stanford has got to have an answer for their rushing game or, or they're going to be blown out of this second half. Second down, call it eight. Carlos Daniels is in the lineup. He's the single back. He's the back to throw it, goes to the sideline. That is too high. Intended for Davis. You said that uh, Bollinger and Dane got tangled up? Well, let Bollinger tell you the story of what happens when Dane ran into him in the Northwestern game. It wasn't a matter of anyone going the wrong way, but uh, I think, you know, he saw the hole a little tight, and, and I was trying to get out of the way of the fullback, whatever, and, and he was already kind of breaking at the hole, and we ran smack into each other, and, and uh, you know, luckily he still got the handoff, but I had to shake my head a couple times and get my sense back after that one. <laughs> oh, can you imagine? Yes, I can. <laughs> 10 to 9, Wisconsin leading. Third down and eight. Bollinger back. Chased out. Sack. The first contact, Sharker Steen. And it put him on his back. Rial Johnson. Wisconsin will punt. And officially, that's the first sack of the day for Stanford. They came into the game with 46 sacks on the year. But that's a huge one on third down to be able to come up with a play like this. Initially, the protection is pretty good. But you see the safety blitz there by number 13, Tank Williams. There's the shark, Shark Esteem, getting help from Rial Johnson. Stepkis punt is away. Good one. High hanger. And Ronnie Pitts has to make a fair catch call on it. And he does it at the 32-yard line, where the Cardinal will have it. First down. Wisconsin leads 10-9. A good uh, effort for the last time. Husak back. Gets it away. And it's good. Davis, who's a good leaper, he went high in the air in front of Mike Eccles and reeled it in. And it's first down at the 45-yard line of Wisconsin. Back on Tuesday when we talked to Todd Husak, he said one of our players, or a couple of them, especially the receivers, are going to have to step up. Well, you just saw an example of what he means by stepping up. You hear that term a lot, but this is what it's all about right here. Ball on the way between two defenders. Big play. 45 yard line. Troy Wired as the deep back gets the ball. Found a little bit of daylight. And then he ran into that tree trunk named Godorzi. A lot of people run into Godorzi this year, too, don't they? Made over 100 tackles this year. And the one guy that Barry Alvarez has told me he's going to miss more than anybody besides perhaps Ron Dane. He said, if I could clone one player and, and fill out an entire defensive unit, it would be a, a player such as Chris Godorzi. Gain was about a half a yard on that play. It'll be second down. And nine. Play action. Husak buys time and goes deep, and there's nobody home. Troy Walters is shouting at uh, the official that they were holding me. And he gets no sympathy. That was just great coverage by number two, and Jamar knows it. Man-to-man -man coverage on the outside with Troy Walters. This is just beautiful coverage. He's holding him by the coattail right there. He got away with it, too, and now he's got maybe more speed than Walters. Usak saw that, threw the ball away. But he held away from the official. The official never saw that right hand on the back of Troy Walters. So it's third down and almost 10. Gets it in there. Look out. Here it goes. Down the middle of the field. It's to the five-yard line. They'll give him the six. They're running picks. Brought down by Jason Doring. Keith, the last time Stanford had the ball, Wisconsin came on the blitz, forced the overthrow. So Bill Diedrich, offensive coordinator's adjustment, is to throw the jailbreak screen against that blitz. 
Great block by Troy Walters will spring this. Number five is Walters. He gets Fletcher out of the way and now quashes down the field and now Pitts is going to take it all the way to the six-yard line. Great adjustment by Stanford on offense. First and goal at the six. Usak stands up and throws into the end zone and it is incomplete. Trying to put air under it for Davis. Davis was defended by Eccles. And Eccles had his hands all over Davis. Yep, he did. But the ball was thrown so far out of the back of the end zone, no way it could be complete. There's a grab right there. Stanford fans see that on the big replay board. And that's what you're hearing. Second down and goal. Wire goes out and Kerry Carter comes into the backfield for the Cardinal. Tyrone Willingham from Jacksonville, North Carolina. Ball is handed off to the big back and the Stanford ground game has just not worked at all today. Donnell Thompson, who used to sell soft drinks at Camp Randall Stadium, made the tackle. Donnell twisted an ankle earlier in practice, but he's another one who's made a quick recovery. Something about playing on New Year's Day, playing in the Rose Bowl, will do that to you. Get you healthy in a hurry. Coy Wire comes back. Now Davis leaves the game. Coy Walters and Deronnie Fitz will go to the top of the picture. And it's third and goal. Usak rolls out. Throws. Incomplete. And so the Wisconsin defense turns them away. Jamar Flesher denied Walters any opportunity to catch the ball. And here comes Vaselli in now to put Stanford back into the lead. You know, in the first half, Fletcher uh, was beaten a couple of times by Walters, but second half, it's been all Jamar Fletcher as he just looks right into the receiver's eyes and anticipates the move. Guess what? John Sandy has uh, healed himself. He's back in to snap. The regular snapper. Usak, the quarterback, holds it. Oh, bad snap. Got off to the side. It's blocked. So Stanford squanders a glorious opportunity. Having it first and goal at the Wisconsin six-yard line, the Badgers rise up and turn them away. And the score remains Wisconsin 10, Stanford 9, 5.24 to play in the third quarter. Over all the details this Monday night, but remember this, you've got to watch to win. The ball will be possessed by Wisconsin at their own nine yard line after blocking the Stanford field goal try. And here come the Cardinals. Stanford shows split. And you got an offensive lineman moving on the right side of the line for Wisconsin, I do believe. Characteristic for Wisconsin to have this many Prior penalties. To the snap, ball start, offense, penalty is half the distance to the goal, still first down. It's their sixth penalty of the afternoon. They come into the game averaging about five. But here's a another bad snap for Stanford. Bad snaps on placement kicks today have cost Stanford four points and obviously the lead. The man who blocked that. Uh, Field goal try was Mike Echo, quarterback. Oh, they go inside the five, turn around and give it to that 18 wheeler, and he gets it back out to the nine. Ron Dane listed at 252. I saw him eating that cake yesterday. <laughs> he had a long time off. He hit that uh, rubber chicken circuit too didn't he yeah I, I i got the biggest kick out of him he said 
was kind of complaining. He said he couldn't wait to get away. And in the New York City was nice and, and all that, but he couldn't wait to get back to practice. He said, you know, you get tired. You got to walk around. You got to smile all the time. <laughs> if he gets nice to be get cramped in the cheeks. <laughs> look out. Look out. Oh, boy. He almost popped out of there. He got it out to the 15 yard line. So it's going to be third down and about four before Tank Williams could wrap his legs. Well, you've got Sean Alexander in the Crimson Tide, and you've got Anthony Thomas in the Michigan Wolverines. It's two teams that love to run the football. They love to play great defense. They're in the FedEx Orange Bowl tonight, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. Part of Super January on ABC. Home of the Bowl Championship Series. I don't know if I can outshot all that music or not. Third down and four. And uh, play clock. They have to call a timeout. They have to call the time. So they do it at 3.57 to play in the third quarter, still leading by a point. North Dakota. Asked what was the call, explained it to him, nods his head, and goes back to work. On the throw. Same play. Same result. Chris Chambers. <laughs> How many is that? He's completed six, five passes to Chambers. Wow. And this is a, you know, third down and short yardage when you think you might want to put a double team on one of the receivers and maybe the, the only guy that he's throwing the ball to chambers beats uh, chris johnson there the nickelback for an easy third down conversion and it's first down badger just beyond the 30. dane fullback hughes gets a little bit of a wedge for him and Steen brings down Dane. Ron picks up about three yards. Aerial coverage for today's show brought to you by AT&T, proud presenting sponsor of the 2000 Rose Bowl game. That's the vision from up there. We haven't really seen a lot of sun today. We had rain, rain mostly yesterday. And last night, had a helicopter in here today trying to blow the grass dry. It's a new turf, and it's held up very well. Bollinger option, pitch it back behind Dane. He was able to control it. That may be the first time or second time all year that he's pitched it back. Most of the time, he keeps it. Uh, Stanford got murdered by the option against Washington when Marcus Tuiasisopo rushed for 207 yards, passed for 302 for a 500-yard day. But uh, he ran the ball most of it. Bollinger usually runs it for Wisconsin on the option, but Stanford played it perfectly and forced the young quarterback into a bad pitch. And now it's third down. I know it says six, but I'll guarantee you it's seven if it's an inch. Bollinger looked like he wanted to take off on the quarterback draw. Now he's trying to outrun everybody, and he can't do it. There's a penalty flag on the field as they bring him down right about the line of scrimmage. Mark Stockbauer tracked him down, number 90. Stanford's defensive game plan has been almost perfect this afternoon. They have contained Bollinger. Haven't gotta, quite contained Ron Dane, but who does? Kent Bear, the defensive coordinator there with the glasses. They got Chris McIntosh for holding on that call. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, this, both these teams, so. Holding on the offense, the penalty is declined, fourth down. Show off some young people that are just really striking. They really are. They, uh, they're well coached, both teams are well coached, but the kids help out a lot. I mean, they're, they're intelligent, they do what they're told, they're well spoken, and a real pleasure to be around. Refusing the penalty brings up fourth down. Stepke hits a high rainbow and 
and uh, look at uh, Durante Fitz. He did not uh, call the fair catch. He felt he might be able to split the people covering, and uh, as a result, I think Bose penetrated that two-yard uh, contain area and didn't give him the fair chance. And uh, there he is. And if you're going to get in that uh, two-yard zone, you might as well get your money's worth Five and take a good shot. <laughs> he just went oh, down God. around the ankle there. <laughs> Let's take a look at our AT&T action highlight. When's the last time a center snap was anybody's highlight? But we've got two of them for you. This one from Anthony Gabriel. That cost him a conversion after a touchdown. This one by John Sandy. That cost him a three-point field goal as Mike Eccles gets the block. The AT&T action highlight, two snaps for the price of one. With a minute and 36 to go in the third quarter, a 10-9 lead for Wisconsin. Stanford ball their own 30. Husek gives it away inside. Boy, wire. Just about the line of scrimmage. You get the feeling they're trying to set something up. Yeah, with you the, do. Don't that, you? That's three times today now that they have brought Walters on the fake reverse and handed it to the uh, up back who's, <laughs> who's got stuffed at the line of scrimmage and lost yardage. Stanford has run the ball 15 times and gained 23 yards. I sort of had, I was wondering, I asked Mark Domeno if they'd gained any. Yeah, the answer is 23. That's not much. Uh -uh. Second down, 11. Husak looking. That's good protection. Puts air under the ball to the sideline. It's intercepted. Bobby Myers, interception. Pass intended for Troy Walters, and Myers just shut him off never gave him a chance and a discussion as to whether Myers came down inbounds or not is taking place there right in front of Dave Tipton defensive line coach there on the left in the Stanford Cardinal and now they're saying no, no catch you know what I love to see that though I mean that one official was in the, looking up the sideline and he knew he didn't come down inside and he held his ground and said no of course it doesn't make Barry happy but there's right. right. He's 53 yards away from it. He's out. Oh, I don't know, Keith. Let's see what hits first. Is it his knee? Is it his shoulder? It's his shoulder. Shoulder. Well, oh, that is a That's tough call, but a good job by the officials difference. getting together. What a catch. Terrific play. But his shoulder and top of him came down out of bounds. Either that was an offensive uh, receiver making that catch. I'd be arguing that that was a good catch. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, Barry doesn't have a sore knee at this moment. <laughs> He's hot. So it'll be third down 11 as the ball comes back. Swing it out to the outside. Pass completed to Coy Wire. Wire's cut down by the Badger defense in a hurry. Well short of the first down and stand for the half to punt. Jamar Fletcher and Jason Doring with the records on that play for the Badgers. Remember the last time Stanford faced a third down and long, uh, they hit the jailbreak screen uh, against the Blitz of Wisconsin. That time, Kevin Cosco, Cosgrove, their defensive coordinator, decided to play zone and let that fine tackling secondary led by Fletcher do the job. Well, let's see if it's Nick Davis time here. As Tolkien Rude gets a good snap from Gabriel back in there and hits a low line drive. There's room. There's one. Oh, boy, that's good coverage downfield. Tim Smith, strong safety. Keith, you know that is six punts now for uh, Davis to uh, try to return. And we talked about the fact that he averages almost 14 yards per return on the season, but only one time has he been able to bring the ball back, and that's for three yards. So Stanford and Tolpenroot have done a great job of taking that weapon away from the Badgers. Four ticks remaining on the clock in the third quarter. Carlos Daniel, single back. Running to the left. Going down in the arms of Stockbauer. So 10-9, to 9, Wisconsin leads after three quarters of play in the 86 Rose Bowl presented by AT&T. And we'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC station. 
75 yards. He looks to be the key man here. So Bollinger keeps that one and turns it upfield for a nice gain on second down and 10. You know, somebody else was inducted into the uh, Rose Bowl Hall of Fame yesterday, along with Al Hoish and Dave Kaiser. People out in the audience that I was. Al, Dave, and uh, my boss. Congratulations, partner. Thank you, man. Well, of course, you went in the NFL Hall of Fame. 19, what, 93, right? Yeah, but I'm uh, Mr. Never Been to the Big One. I never <laughs> played in the Super Bowl or this great uh, bowl game either. I yeah, but you were hell on wheels for the Oregon Ducks. I know that. And winners of the uh, Sun Bowl yesterday over Minnesota. Go Ducks! Only Pac-10 team so far to win, isn't it? Yep. Third down and a little more than five as Bollinger runs out of trouble and will pick up a first down and then some. He's near midfield. First down for the Wisconsin Badgers. So the redshirt freshman starting to make some plays now. Sharkestein on the tackle. You know, Bollinger, they say he's a 4-7-40 guy, but uh, he's one of those athletes that plays faster than uh, he times maybe on a track here. Good recognition there as Dane gets another nice block and Sharkestein can barely get out there for his 11th tackle of the afternoon. Well, there's, all, there's that old argument that there's speed and there's football speed. Yep, he's got football speed. Yep. So from midfield, first down, drop back, looks to throw. Can't set his foot, can't find anybody. Now he's going to run around the crowd. Willie Howard's after him, and the penalty flag goes down. Another one on the sideline. So you got two flags, Stockbauer, and come flying through there, and probably hit him a little late. And but before that, Keith, I think they're going to get Wisconsin for holding. First flag thrown by our referee, Dennis Hennigan. I think these people have done a pretty good job. Don't it, you? It, yeah, and a real good example there is you saw uh, Bruce Palmer, the umpire, come over and talk and settle down the uh, Wisconsin sideline there. Two penalties during the play, holding on the offense. After the play was over, personal foul on the defense. Tyrone Willingham is so stoic, he just <laughs> very on the other side, <laughs> thundering away. Here's the hold. And it's your boy, uh, Chris McIntosh, number 75, working on Willie Howard. And as uh, Bollinger gets to the outside, we can't quite see the hold there, but Howard, with great effort, there's the cheap shot by Stockbauer. It's a cheap shot because he knew that Bollinger was heading sideways going out of bounds. No need to hit the quarterback and no need to hit him that late. Oh, it's a quarterback talking, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Who's been hit one too many times. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear the referee. The personal foul will be assessed because it happened after the play. So they go from the line of scrimmage and mark it off, and the Wisconsin fans love it. They feel they got something out of it anyway, huh? If what not a bruise for their young quarterback. That's right. It's down to the 46-yard line. I'm remaining in the football game, 13:55, and right now, I'm beginning to, to get the feeling that Wisconsin is beginning to win along the line of scrimmage. And they're winning the game, the battle for field position, too. Right now, they're in Stanford territory, and you look at the Cardinal on defense, a lot of them standing there with their hands on their hips. And that's a sure sign of fatigue. That was a 10-yard penalty on Wisconsin, a 15-yard uh, penalty on Stanford, so it's first 10. And hand it off to the big man, and Dane runs into a huge pile. The national championship, the Seminoles of Florida State, and the Virginia Tech. 
will be added in the uh, Sugar Bowl down in New Orleans on uh, January 4. Number one, Florida State. Number two, Virginia Tech. The Nokia Sugar Bowl and the Sears Trophy to be presented to the winner of the Nokia Sugar Bowl in this year's national championship game. On second down and eight, Bollinger thrown down for a huge loss by Rio Johnson. The loss is all the way back to the 42-yard line. Kent Bear's got to love that. First sack of the afternoon for Rial Johnson at 19 on the season. This one is absolutely huge because now Wisconsin will face a third down and a mile for the first. And the battle of field position now goes in Stanford's favor. Well, they're calling it third down and 22. They run the big bar. He bounces outside and gets some of it back. He moves the football back to the 50-yard line where it was a little while ago. And it'll be fourth down for Wisconsin. This guy, number 10 right there, Tim Smith, has gotten very much involved in things around the line of scrimmage of late. And he had to battle the flu earlier in the week. But uh, ex-quarterback showing his toughness now as a strong safety and a big playmaker. Six interceptions this season. Stempke in the punt. That's Durante Pitts waiting for it. It's a high hanger. And a fair catch called by Pitts from just short of the 20-yard line. So it'll be Stanford ball. First down at its own 19. Time remaining in the game, 11-43. Wisconsin. Is settling down. On the 86th playing with the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T. And we've still got ourselves a cracking good football game. Stanford owns it first down at his own 19-yard line. Wisconsin leading 10-9. Offensives have not been able to get on Frank much. Danes had one big run of 64 yards. And Husak is hit as he throws the ball to short and complete. Here's Todd Harris with a special guest. Special indeed, Keith. Thank you very much. He's a Stanford alum, a Heisman Trophy wi winner, and he won here at the Rose Bowl. Jim, i got to ask you, it's been a long time since Stanford won this, but this would be a good time to do it. Oh, it certainly is, and they're playing extremely well. I, I don't think anybody expected it to be as close as it is, and Stanford has every opportunity to win this ball game right now. This has got to be a position where quarterbacks love to come in. What do you think Todd Husak's thinking right about now? Oh, get the ball to his wide receivers, let them make the big plays. What do you think about Stanford's chances as they drive down with Troy Walters in the game? I think it's it's great that he's been able to play and contribute and not just be uh, out there for the heck of it. Uh, and uh, so, you know, it, it gives Stanford another dimension with Troy in there. Best of luck to you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. All right, gotcha. Jim Plunkett, good guy. Yeah, boy, I saw him way too many times from the opposite sideline, starting in 1970 when he came up to Eugene and beat our Ducks and went on to do all those great things in his career, including a couple of Super Bowl wins with those, oh, those Raiders. Well, you could tell when he first showed up, though, he was going to be something special. He had great poise and work ethic. Yeah, he was a man playing among boys. Third down now and 10 for Stanford. Wisconsin backs out. The linebackers drop. Pressure, down he goes. Terrific play by Ben Herbert. Number 42 came flying through and made the tackle. He's only made to one other sack all year long, but here he is. 42 working against Greg Schindler there overpowers Schindler and easily takes down the quarterback. This time the punt has to come out of the end zone. Tolpin Rue the snap gets it out. Wisconsin's going to get a real good field position here. It's going to be right about the 40 yard line on the Stanford side of the field. Advantage hugely here for Wisconsin. I'm out. Driving. Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. We measure success one investor at a time. And Sears. And the Sears National Champion Football Trophy. 
Wisconsin will enjoy great field position, and this is the story of the game so far. Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter, game stats. Stanford doing nothing on the ground. Wisconsin playing Wisconsin football. Ron Dane. He's going to have six yards on that carry and put it at the 34-yard line. This is the best starting point of a possession for Wisconsin in the ball game. Our attendance at the 86 Rose Bowl game, 93,731. I know that you generally are accustomed to hearing crowds of 100 plus. Well, it's a little smaller than it used to be. When the 84 Olympics were here, they reduced the size of it some. We had the soccer here as part of the Olympics. This is Dane again. Number 90, the penetration by Stockbauer. He couldn't quite hold him. Uh, he's still short of his first down, however, by about a yard and a half or two. When you when you watch Ron Dane, you, you really realize that for a running back, that uh, there's such a fine line between patience and hesitation. But he has learned the difference when you combine his size and his speed. But what I like is the way he anticipates the running lane, lets his offense alignment do their job, and then he makes the big play. Very patient. Yep. Third and two. Oh, is this a substantial play? Dane didn't get it. Tim Smith and Mark Stockbauer. The two of them brought him down. And Kent Bear told us that uh, the overload to the left with the linebackers and Tim Smith coming up. Watch as the motion comes. Stanford will move to the left side, anticipating the tendency of Wisconsin to run strong. Well, right there is Tim Smith and Stockbauer reading their keys and making the plays. And now a fourth down. Fourth and two, and they'll go. Beyond field goal reach. Better hurry. And they got a call time up. Eight minutes and 48 seconds to play in a ball game. And we have a moment of tedium waiting after this timeout. That hit by AT&T, and the AT&T presenting sponsor is providing the aerial views for this 2000 Rose Bowl game. Here comes fourth and two. Throws it out. Throws the ball. It's caught. Almost dropped by John Sigmund, the tight end. He bobbled it and took it to the ground and made the catch. Wow. And because it's his first catch of the year, he decided he's going to catch it twice. <laughs> the bootleg here by Bollinger. Sharkestein is going to put the pressure on him, but from the left side of the screen there, you see Sigmund put his hand up. There's one catch. Oh, he caught it three. Give him three receptions on the year. <laughs> <laughs> it was certainly worth it for the coach. Indeed. Huge play. You talk about breaking tendency, throwing the ball to a guy that hasn't caught one in 11 games. First down for the Badgers. Bollinger back. Wanted to go deep. Throws now. The pass is complete to Segman. He's got all that confidence. He dives for the goal line. And uh, they don't give him the touchdown. My goodness. John Sigmund suddenly shows up. Big guy <laughs> from Sewell, New Jersey. He had six receptions coming into the game. He's the littler of the two big tight ends. It's 6'6", 272. He's a junior, and he uh, doesn't quite got that part of the game figured out yet. <laughs> but two plays in a row, and Wisconsin's in business at the three. First and goal for the Badgers. A 10 to 9 lead with 8-12 to play in the ball game. Boy, this would be a big one. Here comes the, the hammer. Out at the one. You know, we talked a lot about uh, the big old thumper back. <laughs> well, we got the prototype here. I mean, if you talk, want to know what a thumper looks like, he's on the field, number 33. I may have to uh, get you to come up with a new name, though, <laughs> because uh, he's in a class by himself, yes, obviously, the Heisman Trophy, the all-time leading collegiate rusher. He may be a thumper and a half. He's been running downhill ever since he decided to play the game. 
Second down and goal from the one. break it and then he got pushed back Smith again involved with Tank Williams it's right at the goal line third down I don't know what was more impressive on this play uh, Stanford's initial stop of Dane where he actually went backwards but then he got his legs under him again and almost got the ball in the end zone third and goal Bollinger, touchdown. Pretty good fight down along the trenches, but he's got his six. Get used to the name, folks. In the Big Ten, especially, it's Bollinger. Kozetsky for the point. Kim Rosga holds for Wisconsin. The kick is away and good. And so Stanford will get the ball back at 7.22 to play in the game. But now Wisconsin leads them 17-9. While you watch the game, log on to ESPN.com or ABC.com on Tuesday, January 4, for the BCS National Championship game. Virginia Tech and Florida State. Krasetsky's kick. Good one. And the three. It's Ryan Wells. He lost his wheels at about the 18-yard line. As old Ben Herbert making another big play. So you got John Sigmund and Ben Herbert that have suddenly shown up big time. And what has not shown up big time or even little time for Stanford is their rushing attack. They were so proud of the fact that coming into the season they had improved so much over last year. 154 yards per game, only four today. Let's make it the 19-yard line and... First down, Stanford with 7.13 to play. Walters is the man in motion. They run it. Well, that's not much there, is there? Kerry Carter. The one thing Wisconsin's been able to do in the second half is, is to take Troy Walters out of the game. Yep. A combination of good tight coverage by Jamar Fletcher and zone defenses. Zero catches here in the second half. He's out there wide with Fletcher. There they are. Pressure coming. Husak's in trouble. Now he gets a little daylight and throws the ball behind the intended receiver. We saw Casey, Casey Moore. Yeah, Casey made a great catch in the first half. That ball was. Uh, thrown a little bit behind him that time by Husak. And again, Husak uh, got his feet tangled up a little bit, was a little bit slow getting out of his fake. But at this point of the game, receivers have to do unusual things. The offensive line has to block longer. The quarterback's got to throw better. And receivers have got to make those nearly impossible catches. See the time remaining. 631. That's not a whole lot in college football. Stanford, however, has been pretty good on the two-minute offense. But Wisconsin now is just breathing fire. They're all over. All oh, just eating them up. Wendell Bryant, the man who destroyed that. And Husak had to get rid of the ball or take a sack. Bryant showed uh, such good speed there that uh, Husak wanted to throw a screen pass. But Bryant and Fabre were in on him so fast that uh, there was no time for the screen to develop. So they'll punt it away on a three and out. And Nick Davis is waiting. Got to hold your breath when he's back there. If he has room, that ball won't get to him and it goes straight sideways. And 
finally be put down at about the 47 48 yard line. So Wisconsin owns the football at virtually midfield after a 32 yard punt. 6 16. They start with the football at the 47 yard line. They lead 17 to 9. Stanford defense getting tired here in the fourth quarter. Wisconsin has just taken over the ball game in the second half. And though they haven't been able to really pull away and and uh, blow the Cardinal out of the Rose Bowl, they are beginning to assume control. And time now is definitely the ally of the Wisconsin Badgers. Getting great leadership from that offensive line. Leadership and tenacity, the two key words for the Badgers. Hollinger gives it again to Ron Dane. Got his legs under him and just keeps on trucking. First down, Badgers near the 40-yard line. Take a look at our Dell game solutions. The Stanford Cardinal controlled Ron Dane in the first half. But remember that 64-yarder to start the second half. And since then, and especially now, Dane with the ball behind that big offensive line. Great field position. All the things that Barry Alvarez said would happen today. First down, Badgers. Got it again. You see how quickly he, he he saw his hole, saw where he wanted to go, planted, boom, gone. Yep. Um, he's, that's 255 pounds, folks. It's smooth, too. Mm -hmm. Just glides out there, lets those big guys do their job, and the smooth, quick acceleration. Things did get better in the second half, didn't they? They got back to Wisconsin football. Give them the ball to number 33. Why not? They've got a couple of tailbacks coming in. I understand as freshmen that are that are uh, economy size too. Here he goes again. Look at that. You don't get tokens for that free ride. I'll tell you. It's down to the 13-yard line before Tank Williams and Frank Primus can finally get him tangled up and bring him down. And it's first down, Wisconsin. 13 is Three. Tank Williams, Keith, and uh, the Stanford Cardinal tank is just about empty. Yep. Watch the job along the right side. You've got Costa. They just collapse the uh, Cardinal defense. And there's that free ride, Primus and Tank Williams on the back of the Great Dane. From the 23 now, Dane is out of the ball game, and Carlos Daniels is in. Uh, Chad Kuhn's getting that carry. I think that's his second one of the day. And he gets a little bit out of it, a couple of three yards. Talk about jumbo size. Uh, Daniels, fullback, backup fullback, 6'1", 243, just a sophomore. So, good old Chad. He <laughs> working hard. He's put in a full day, hasn't he? He's 228 pounds, a sophomore. Daniels is also a sophomore. There's a lot of young players on this Wisconsin football team. They might be back here next year. I look for Stanford to be, uh, be a pretty good football team in, uh, again next year, too. Uh-oh, oh, did that ball come out? Not if they gave it to Ron Dane, it didn't. No, it's uh, Carlos Daniels in there. Time permitting, we invite you to stay tuned for the 2000 Ford Taurus postgame show, including the trophy presentation and interviews. Ball is right on the 20-yard line, where it's third down and seven. Now Dane's back. Caught his breath, and he's back. Gets the ball, coming outside. He didn't get his first down. He had to get on inside the 15-yard uh, line to do that. Tank Williams, number 13 right there. He was a little bit deflated after thumping into that big old guy. And, and uh, Stockbauer, Stockbauer's played a good football game for Stanford. He's had a good year. Yep. And timeout call now by Stanford. Wisconsin with one timeout remaining. Stanford now has one remaining. Time remaining in the game, you see, 223. In the game, and the Badgers are driving. 
They're looking at fourth down uh, right now and trying to add three with Vitaly Prasetsky. This might be enough. Low. Missed it. That snap was a little high. It didn't get the ball down perhaps as cleanly as he would have liked to. And uh, he missed the point. I mean, he missed the field goal. So 17 to 9 means an eight point difference. And you've got enough time for a passing team. So I would say this the, the, uh, the well advertised crossing patterns of the Stanford attack have been contained here in the second half. Well, they studied the uh, tape of the Notre Dame Stanford game and they saw. Stanford at the end of each half go down the field with those crossing patterns but I got a feeling we'll see a couple of them right now as Stanford comes out in four wides. It's Uso, Davis, Walters and Pitts. There's one. Pretty good lick on Pitts there by Mike Eccles the boundary corner. But he caught it and got something out of it. And he got out of bounds. And killed the clock. 213 remaining. Gain of five yards on the play. Wisconsin will stay back in a very loose, do I dare say the word prevent defense. They'll play it a little bit tighter than that right now, but they want to keep Stanford in front of them and make the tackle. Very sure tackling secondary that Stanford's up against. Second down and five. Out of the shotgun, Husak buying time out of the formation. Down the middle, big play. Point at the 45-yard line by Tafiti Uso. The anticipation by Husak on this throw was outstanding because Uso wasn't open when he let the ball go. Uso turned his head around. The ball was right there for the catch. Clock stops, remember, in college football till they move the chains and they was there's a penalty flag here. Look out for this one. That ball is caught by Tafiti Uso again, and he steps out of bounds, would have a first down, but there's a flag on the far side of the field. Look out for that. It might be against Wisconsin lining up in the neutral zone. Thrown at the line of scrimmage. They didn't have the chain set either. It's against Wisconsin, all right, then. Keith Jackson, Dan Fouts, and Todd Harris, your announcers for today's ball game. Offsides on the defense. Penalty will be declined. First down. Put it on the 44-yard line of Wisconsin. First down. One timeout remaining for Stanford. And remember, they've got to get a touchdown. And then, which it may be even harder to do in college football, is they've got to convert a two-pointer to tie it. Tyrone Willingham has put some trophies in his trophy case this season as well. The stoic one. Pass quickly over the middle to Pitts and complete. Thrown hard and behind him. Usak felt some urgency. What were the blocking collapsing and the pressure coming? And what he also saw, Keith, was big number 77, Wendell Bryant dropping back into coverage looking for one of those crossing routes watch Bryant come out looking exactly if he doesn't get in the way the referee doesn't get in his way there the umpire he might have killed the receiver <laughs> Wendell Bryant doing it both ways second down and ten now you got flags Wisconsin's applauding movement in the offensive front by Stanford and that's probably going to cost snap, him five false start offense five yard penalty remain second down Tyrone calling to his warriors keep your poise stay calm stay like me yep. Tyrone very composed on the sidelines on the other side there's that volcano <laughs> I'm so happy that he could get down there. Get yeah. down on the uh -huh. sidelines and uh, stay out of harm's way. Great for Barry Alvarez. Get back where he wants to be. I hope it doesn't bother him. Yeah. That's a very difficult thing he's dealing with. That knee. There's another break. That's it's two in a row for Schindler. Twice in a row. Schindler has moved. And that'll cost him another five yards. So with 152 to play in the game now, the Stanford Cardinal having a little trouble holding Prior their points. Snap, false start on the offense. 
five-yard penalty remains second down. And Usak is talking to the official about uh, Wisconsin maybe jamming their signals. The defense will do that, especially at critical times of the, of the game after they've heard a quarterback all game long. They'll try to make a sound uh, similar to Usak makes as far as getting the ball snapped. And remember, Mike McLaughlin uh, only started the game, and he's been out virtually all of it. So uh, uh, the fellow who plays guard, uh, Zach Quatcha, has been the center. Usak running out of the pocket, dropped the ball, and Stanford covers it. It was Eric Heitman who saw the loose football and fell on it. Golodji was the man that knocked it loose for Wisconsin. A couple of moments ago, Stanford had good field position. We were talking about a two-point conversion tying this game. Since then, straight backwards. Yep, and they've done most of it themselves. Yeah. Usak rolls out to get time and throws complete to Deronnie Pitts. So they're going to have to look at a fourth and long to keep the ball. That stops the clock at 118 to play. But, but it's a very manageable long situation. Forget the fact that it's fourth down. This is a normal type of situation for a third down with uh, about seven and a half, eight yards to go. Stanford can use their entire offense, and they're going to need their entire offense. Where has number five, Troy Walters, been? No catches in the second half. Mr. Fletcher has been on him like a shirt. And they've got him in a slot now on the top of the screen right here. Yeah, he's away from Fletcher for the moment. Yep. Going that way, and he's hit as he throws, and it is incomplete. But, Keith, the flag is down. It was delay of game against Stanford. So there's no play. And that's a break for Stanford. They'll get penalized the five yards, but they'll get one more shot. Prior to the snap, delay a game on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains fourth down. There are no options on this dead ball call. It's 116 to play. And, and you know, the crazy way this game is, all the injuries that Stanford's had to overcome this week, uh, here they have a bad play. Clock didn't run, though, in that last one, Dan. Yep. Shouldn't it be less than 116? Yes, it should. Fourth down and 12. Nothing. Wisconsin just won the football game. 1-11 to go. Ben Herbert with his second big play in the fourth quarter. is number 42 coming clearly unblocked there Fairchild gets out a little bit too late and the frustration for senior quarterback Todd Husak is matched by the jubilation of Barry Alvarez don't no jump, Barry don't jump <laughs> <laughs> my goodness don't jump hmm. well they're never going to call it air Alvarez I guarantee you that <laughs> they don't have to they're no. about to do something no Big Ten team has ever done win back-to-back -back Rose Bowls. Now all they've got to do is just run out the clock. Stanford is one timeout remaining, and you know they'll spend it as soon as they can. They keep tucking the ball into the big guy, Dane, and it's hard to take it away from him. And you've got 104 to play now, and Stanford with no more times up. This 86 Rose Bowl game presented by AT&T. This year's president of the Tournament of Roses, Kenneth H. Burroughs. And we want to say for an old friend, good friend, and a wonderful man who has handled the business for the Rose Bowl game and all of this, the CEO of the Tournament of Roses, Jack French, is retiring. The books are closed on this one. He and Patty are going off to do some different things. But we've certainly enjoyed our years of being associated with Jack Fox. Second down and four. 
That'll be a first down for the Wisconsin Badgers. Now the count will begin. Today's game produced by Mark Loomis, directed by David Kiviat, Gary Larkins, our technical director, associate producer Derek Mobley, associate director Brian Fay, assistant to the producer Brian Lockhart, Anthony D'Annunzio, production manager Joe Alvarado, tech ops manager Mark Torrey, statistician Mark Camento, Kelly Hayes came down off the mountain to spot, save the day again. Computer stats, Jason Shaviko and Tim Goodman. And we wish all of you a very good year in this new century. And Keith. And we're running down the clock. And uh, Happy New Year to you. It's been great working with you. Great to have you back. I know everybody around the country, around the world, just loves to hear the voice of college football. And I'm lucky enough to be up here standing oh, next to you. Thank you, Dan. Bless your heart. I appreciate that. My, my pleasure. My pleasure indeed. As it continues to tick along. And now here's a point where it gets kind of dangerous for Barry Alvarez with all of the stuff going on on the field. You don't want to get too involved with it. 2-1. It's over. The Wisconsin Badgers win. 17-9. They are the first Big Ten team ever to win successive Rose Bowl games. We'll be back with two.